Welcome to Beyond the Ropes, a boxing podcast brought to you by Eat Sleep Boxing Repeat. The place for the Northwest and boxing news, news, reviews, and interviews. Here's your host, Sean Basso. Welcome to this special episode of Beyond the Ropes Boxing Podcast. Sean Basto, your host as always. And this is a new segment of episodes to Beyond the Ropes Boxing Podcast. I've entitled it The Life and Times Of. And basically the idea is to go around, look at past fighters, discuss with past fighters their careers, their ups, their downs, their highs and their lows. It's a real, real pleasure to get our first guest on this segment of episodes. And I'm really, really pleased to announce that we've got El Diablo. Angel Man Freddy on the show today. So have a listen to the interview that I conducted with him. I hope you thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. He talks about all the highs, he talks about all the lows, the drug taking, the women, the preparation for fights, the fights with Gatti, Mayweather, Ivan Robinson, Diego Corrales. So sit back and listen to Angel giving his take on his career and please enjoy. I'm delighted to have my guest on this evening, Angel Manfredi. Angel, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to us. Really appreciate you coming on and I'm really looking forward to recording this episode with you and discussing your career, uh, your life as a fighter and, and what your life's like now. Um, beautiful. I'm, I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Beyond the ropes. Appreciate you very much and I thank you. And uh, exciting career and, uh, and also a lot of things happening now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's... let's Let's take it back to the beginning then, Lee, and talk me through your, your early years and how you came to be about in, in the boxing world and how you actually got into boxing and the amateur boxing side of things before you turned professional. Oh, uh, well, I guess I guess the, the story starts from October 30th, 1974, and that date, October 30th, 1974, was Ali versus George Foreman, when we in the jungle. Well, I was born that same day, and right. all, I, all I've done I was born the same day as the greatest fighter of all time when we in the jungle. And all I was born in Gary, Indiana. Uh, so, still Tom, Tony Zell, and Michael Jackson, Jackson 5, and Ben Robson, and all that, and Matt Freddy. And uh, all I did was fight on the street. Uh, I got up the streets at nine years old. I have to beat somebody up bad from the project. This kid up real bad from the project. So, uh, walking home, and my dad seeing blood on my hand. And he looked at me and said, You're fighting again? I said, Oh, yes. He said, Did you want? I said, Yes. I said, Come on. I, I turned uh, got into the ring. First day in the ring, got knocked down three times. Spawn with a guy named Jesus Fuentes. And uh, he was already a boxer. And my first time, first day. They put the gloves on me the first time, first day into in, in the ring. And uh, I got knocked down three times, but would not stop fighting. And I, after the third knockdown, I looked at everybody and pointed at everybody and said, I'm going to be world champion. They laughed at me. All my whole life, I was always put down, told I was never going to be done, never going to accomplish something, never was going to go nowhere in life. And uh, I wouldn't allow nothing, nothing to stop me. I wouldn't allow nothing to stop me. Uh, even my own dad, you know, saying my, my, my father. You know, but it wasn't my father, it was the alcohol. But I didn't let that stop me because uh, I knew what I was called to do and I spoke it. And I told people I was going to be world champion at nine years old and it happened. So going back, Angel to when you got back in you got back into the boxing ring like you said there you you got knocked down a few times the first time in the ring and I think a lot of people at that point would walk away you know at that age they might just go this is not for me but as you've shown throughout your career you was a fighter that always bounced back and you had a you had a great amateur career really as well you had an amateur record of 48 and and 8 and then you transitioned over to the pro game you lost your first pro fight and a lot again a lot of people at that point would I think they'd probably start questioning themselves what was you like on, on that first fight? How did you feel after going in there, after all that training and losing that first fight? Well, I mean, the first fight, I, I, I guess uh, pride comes before fall. And uh, I was very uh, prideful at the time. And I was very, uh, I thought I couldn't be touched. I thought that could stop me. Uh, and I was 18 years old. I was still uh, in high school when I turned pro. I was a senior in high school when I turned pro. And uh, I just felt untouchable at the time. But uh, maybe before, uh, 
was out party with some friends, smoking some weed, and uh, and party with some friends. And they had the fire. They show what happened. I got TKO'd. Uh, I threw what around, but uh, I got shot in my first pro fight. And after my first pro fight, I got it. more dedicated to that. And then you went on within the first five, Angel, didn't you? You went on to uh, get a, a technical draw in your second fight. Uh, you won the next two by knockout, and then you get in your fifth fight, and you lose a majority of decision over four rounds back in 94 you, by the time you've had five professional fights you've you've lost two you've drawn one and you've won two and you've got a bit of a 50-50 record at this point of your career and obviously we're going back way to way back when to 94 but talk to me about what that was like at the time and and, and obviously what boxing was like for someone like you at that point in, in time and you know in this day well in this day and age a lot, a lot of guys you know even over here in the UK if they, they get to a level after five fights some of them might just decide well do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna fight on the road and I'm just gonna earn a pay packet every week what what was it like for you back in 94 after five fights uh, yeah it was difficult but yeah after five fights uh, I went to my car accident uh, in 94 I got into my car accident and uh, fatal car accident almost took my life and uh, I was partying once again doing cocaine and drinking at the time I still was not stable I still was not a stable man at the time I still was not mature and uh, I got into a car I was straight through a telephone pole driver started smashing the past side front and smashing my chest and they had to walk me out of the car to get me out of the car and their jaws get me out and uh, all I remember was waking up pointing at the doctor walk in I point at the back and said will I ever be able to fight again he tells me never again you're finished you're done you'll never be able to fight again you're done you will never be able to fight again and he and in my mind in my for the mouse is home man I think it's so easy and in my mind I said we'll see about that Three months later, I got back in the, to the ring. Three years later, I was world champion. I never let nobody tell me I could stop, that, that I can't do something. Uh, regardless of how my career started, it wasn't how it starts to how it finishes. That's what makes a champion a champion. And uh, after becoming world champion at 21 years old, after the car accident, which was only three years later, I became world champion. Yeah, that was back in 95. Uh, you were in the world boxing union tied super featherweight title against calvin grove and uh, uh calvin grove at the time you know very well respected fighter been in with a lot of great fighters at that point in your career so i think it was uh, a fight that like, maybe a lot of people maybe thought at the time you wouldn't actually win but you've gone off like you say after the car accident you've come back and you, you, you bounce back and you had a really really good successful run uh which culminated obviously in in, in this world title and what 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 was life like for you outside of the ring because you t- obviously it's, it's well documented that you had a lot of issues in and in, inside and outside of the ring and you've said it yourself here that you know you was out partying drinking things like that happened was was there a lot of temptation that came around with the money that came with the fighting well i mean after the car accident i was named el diablo because i was given the name el diablo it was the first fight after the car accident which i knocked out this guy real nasty in the ring and then the nickname of my my, my trainer John Taylor screamed after I knocked him out he said he don't fight like no angel he fight like the devil and my manager which is George Streeter he got a devil's mask a week or two later after the fight he said we're going to wear a devil's mask and your name's going to be called El Diablo your nickname's going to be El Diablo and uh, I nicknamed myself El Diablo, and uh, I was knocking everybody out after after uh, after after Kirk Cowboy Grove. It just kept on knocking everybody out throughout my career. Uh, the temptation was always there. It was always there when I was El Diablo. Uh, took drugs was always a part of my life. Liquor, women, fame, fortune, making millions of dollars in my boxing career. It was always there until after my conversion of Christianity. When I came out with God Jesus on a on a main event on ESPN two, and that was after the Steve Johnson fight when I was going to commit suicide. Well, we'll touch on that a, a little bit later on because obviously it's a it's a very low point in your life and your career, and it's something obviously we we, we should touch on in this in in this conversation because it's it's what it's what made you the man you are today. But going back to 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 where you were in the nickname Vel Diablo, it's uh, it's quite ironic uh, that that you you was nicknamed that because of your fighting style and obviously with the the, the, with the religious aspect of things you know you, you become a born again Christian later on down the line and it's um, 
It's quite ironic that that you, you did have the fighting nickname of El Diablo, and then uh, later on down the line you become a born again Christian, and and obviously everybody knows the the sort of religious sides of of, of heaven and hell, devil and the god. So it's um it's it's it's, it's big it's irony really, isn't it? It's, it's a complete irony that that that, that changed your, your your life completely and it turned around. But going back to going back to when you won the uh, World Boxing Union Super Featherweight title, like you said, you started to to knock people out and you started to become more and more noticed and you started to become a, a real hot prospect uh, in America at the time and you started getting in with some bigger names going back to the bigger names that you was in with going back into 97 you went in with Jorge Payas and then Arturo Gatti as well you know two big names in the boxing world at this point in time talk to me fr- through them fights talk to me about how they all came about and the the fights with Payas the fights with Gatti the win over Gatti obviously it's a massive win because we all know what he went on to do a couple of years later oh well I mean Gatti Gatti uh, I mean it was uh it was uh, about three years before the guy fight me and my girl, my girlfriend uh, at the time, Yvette Rivera. My girlfriend Yvette, she, we were watching TV, which is now my wife. We were watching TV and uh, and we we're watching the Gotti. Gotti was the main event on ESPN too, and uh, he knocked his style out real nasty on TV. I pointed the TV. He said, "I'm gonna fight him one day, babe." And she said, "Yeah, right." <laughs> she liked she 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 liked it, Gotti. You know, she uh, liked the way he looked. She liked the way he fought. You know, say, and uh, I was once again in my mind. Once again, somebody's down. Putting doubt, somebody putting unbelief, somebody putting that I cannot achieve. Nobody beat me in the ring, but but me. I stopped me. I beat me from becoming three, four time world champion, five time world champion. But I became, I won two titles in my career. But I stopped me because of what I was, the life I was living in and out of the ring. Yeah. That's the name of my movie. The name of my movie, uh, I'm, 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 I, I'm with mood producers from Florida, and we're going to be doing a, a, a film. And it's going to be a documentary or a movie, but that's the name of the title. It's called In and Out of the Ring. And uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because that's, I want to look forward to every lost true story of my life. The devil side, El Diablo, the angel side, angel. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'm looking forward to telling people what I've gone through in life, spending millions of dollars partying it. The lifestyle I live, and uh, you, you when you hear what I've gone through in life, you'll be like, "Wow, why are you still functioning? Why did you achieve what you achieved on TV, and and still was doing all what you're doing, and still achieve all of that, and beat the best fighter, Arturo Gatti, on HBO, and your third fighter on HBO, beat the best fighter, Arturo Gatti." You know, see, the, the 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 title makes the cha- the the, the, the Champion makes the title. The title makes the champion. As you know, he was the IBF. I was the WBU. But it did not matter. It was a 12-round fight. It was that lightweight. And it did not matter who he was at the time because I was determined to be the best in the world. And I beat the best. And after being the best, I was number 16, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world at that time to be Arturo Gatti. So that was... um for people that have not watched that fight, you know, I, I I didn't watch it at the time. I was a boxing fan back in '98, of course. But going back to that particular fight, it's uh, it, when you watch it and you go back and you know, for people that listen to this podcast, can go and watch it on YouTube if they've not already seen it, and they can see the way you systematically broke him down, uh, knocking him down in the third round, and then eventually, obviously, the corner you had to pull him out because the cut was that bad on his eye that uh, he was pulled out of oh, the fight yeah. and. And, and obviously you won, but it was the way, for me, it was the way you systematically broke down a guy that was on top of the world at that point in time. And you, 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 you took over his mantelpiece and that, that leads on to some of the other big fights you've had, which we'll talk about. But just just, 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 just describe that feeling. Uh, what was the feeling like in the ring when that fight got called over and, and you was the winner? Well, I- you know, it, it was already predestined because I already spoke it three years before the fight. It was already predestined. It was already predestined in my life to be the best in the world. And I achieved it when I beat him. When I beat her too, I basically beat the highest rated fighter in the world. And he's the Rocky of 
she was the Rocky of boxing, you'll say, but, but he literally didn't know what I had in store for him at the time. I cut him the first round, I dropped him the third round, and he stopped the fight at the beginning of the eighth round because the cut was all the way down to his bone and it was squirting out blood, and they still didn't want to stop the fight. It did not matter. They, the only one that was on my side at the time was George Foreman, and George Foreman said they should stop this fight. Why are they allowing this fight to continue? He's going to lose the eye. Why, you know, and they stopped it. So I got the victory. Regardless of anything in life, I became the best at that time when I beat Arturo Gotti. And uh, I was the name of boxing at the time. El Diablo was the name. I was something different. I was something exciting. I was something that had a story. I was something that walked the walk and talked to talk in and out of the ring, regardless of what I was still dealing with in life, in my mind, in my body, in my spirit. It's because what I was still doing in my life, still living out of the ring, not living right, but in the ring, always ready. Uh, man, Freddy. So uh, it's the big story, and everybody wants the true story about it. And, and uh, my accomplishments in the ring, I, I I thank the Lord for it all. I thank the Lord for it all that I came out of the ring. As you can, I, as you can see, I can speak fluently, and uh, I'm a motivational speaker. I can speak fluently, and I I I can talk and hold a conversation with, with no problem. I have, I'm, I'm physically and mentally and sound in my mind. I. I have no problems speaking. I but there's a lot of fighters that have a lot of problems. You know, what I'm saying I, I thank God that physically, and mentally, and health. I'm very healthy and very uh, sound. You know, in my mind. You know, saying I thank I thank the Lord for it all. So going back to what you've said earlier, um, it's it's stuff that you've touched on during the course of the conversation, and it's it's about the par- uh-huh. it's about the party, and it's about the stuff you had to you did outside of the ring, and did did that affect you a, a lot for for a lot of the fights because it, it was something that oh, yeah. was, was publicized. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, what affected me in my career, what it stopped me from being the best is either you're going to give 100% or you're not. After yeah. the car accident, I gave 100%, but then I went back once the fame came, once the money starts coming in, once the million started coming in, I changed. I was living like a devil, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wasn't walking and walking. Talk, I was talking and talking, but not walking the walk. I, 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 I was still struggling with the, still struggling with different uh, temptations and what I had to offer in life. And I was falling, and I was falling, and it came to a point of suicide. You know what I'm saying? I uh, got tired of saying one thing and doing another. And I got tired because I'm not that type of person. When I say something, a man is only as good as his word. When I say something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to capitalize it. I'm going to make it happen. Now, I was always, I'm always that type of person. And I and I got to a point in my life where I didn't care no more about me. I didn't care about what I represented. I didn't care about my kids. I didn't care about my wife. I didn't care about my team. I didn't care about nothing. I just wanted to take my life. I was unhappy. I was unfulfilled. I was empty and Side. I, I just didn't have, I had a million dollars in America, I still wasn't happy, I just was not content, I was not happy with myself because I wasn't being real with people, I was living behind a devil mask. Yeah. That's what it was all about. I was living down in I was double-minded. And the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I was double-minded. I was unstable. I was not walking the narrow road of boxing or in and out of the ring. I was not doing it. And, uh, and uh, that's, that's what God gave me the title in and out of the ring because it's not it's 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 not what well, it's it's what you do in the ring, but it's also what you do out of the ring and which gets you into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. What gets you into the Hall of Fame what, what makes you known throughout the world. You know, say throughout the world. And that's what I brought to the table. I brought to the table in the ring but all my fan base, I I was one of the highest rated fighters in the world in the nineties and all my fan base was always more Wondering out of the ring, what does this guy like out of the ring? I mean, to the fans, I, I love the fans. I, 
I I always say autographs to the fans for free. I although always there for the fans. I was always there. I fought for the fans. I I I had a big stage before me, a big platform before me, and I always represented a devil or an angel. Which side are you gonna choose? Which side are you gonna live? And let alone I was hiding behind a devil's mask and, and for some of that. And uh, I thank God that I didn't take my life. I thank God that I had to make a decision whether to give my life to the Lord or to take my life. And uh, as you can see, uh, you already know what happened. Yeah, exactly. I gave my life. Yeah, the rest, the rest is the rest is history, as they say. Going back then, a- Angel. Going back to 1998, and would you say it's that what that was the highest point of your career? Box- Boxing wise, what was one? Was what I uh, want to beat Gotti? Yeah, would you say that was um, the, 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 well ninety eight as a whole the highest the highest point of your career because you beat Gatti that year. You had two fights. You had a great fight with John Brown, and then you go on and face who, who we now know as uh, one of the best fighters. Who labels himself as one of the best fighters ever in Floyd Mayweather Junior. You come up against a twenty one year old Floyd Mayweather, and you, you go in, and it was uh, it was a very very big fight at the time in the America and a really really hyped one and you know you can still find all the uh, uh, promotional stuff online for it I, now okay yes but I don't think it was as big as the Gotti fight uh, because Mayweather was a, uh, a seasoned name at the time yeah uh, he won the world title from Janelle Hernandez and Janelle Hernandez is an awesome champion and he's missed as well but uh, he was already on his way out and Bob knew what he was doing by putting his belt in Mayweather's hand yeah. Mayweather the disability so after he beat me. He never had to get past me. But little did they know when they, when we were going through negotiations, Drew DeBella, which was with HBO, which was making all the fights for HBO at the time, said, we have a fight for you, Matt Brady. I said, cool, I'll fight anybody. He said, Floyd Mayweather. I said, who the hell is that? <laughs> I'll fight him. I didn't even know who he was. Well, no one did, I didn't did know they? He was a, I didn't know he was a brown medalist. I didn't know that all his family, his whole generation, the generation of family, all Fighters, you know, my family generation. My dad's a steel worker. I mean, come on. I mean, I rarely know it. Is. Well, my family, I have Italian in my blood. I know that now, Cecilia. That's where that pretty came from. But I, I really don't know too much about historically about my family's background. But Mayweather, his whole family is their their generation of boxers. I mean, but I take nothing away from Mayweather. I didn't know who he was. I couldn't make the weight at one thirty. The only reason why I took the fight was because I made a million dollars. Yeah. They they said a million they said a million dollars. I said, uh, let me think about that. <laughs> and uh and it, 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 it didn't take me long to think about it. You know what I'm saying? Because at in the ninety eight million dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, especially you know say when you when you're when you're the star of the show. And maybe they was they gonna fight me, maybe they had a problem with money back then. And they were the if maybe was the fact that I made a million more than him, he wouldn't have fought me. So that's why they made the, they cut the check in three. It's always three with me, like I said, my friend. It's always three October thirtieth. I mean, I mean three car. Uh, I mean, I mean everything ended with three. God, God, you the third round. I mean three. Everything with three, and uh, and they cut the check in three. It made it look like I made three or four hundred thousand dollars, but really I made a million dollars because they were the one that fought me because uh, I made a million dollars. But when he hears this, or when he hears the broadcast, or when he finds out, or when he reads my book, because I'm doing a book by my all. To my writer, she Julie Bridgeson, she's writing my book, and uh, and the title of my book is called "So Be It." Uh, so it's going to be an awesome book, and uh, all the facts are going to be in it. It's an autobiography book, and uh, you know, Mayweather was not the star at the time. It was yeah. Matt Freddy that was the star, and uh, it, when he beat me, I said I knew they shouldn't have shot the fight, though I knew in my heart I shouldn't have fought him at one thirty. That's why after that fight, well, after after I fought Mayweather, after he beat me, I went back up to 135, and I got the highest rating on HBO beating Ivan Robinson after he beat Gotti twice. I destroyed Ivan Robinson on HBO, and I got the highest rating on HBO in 99. Nobody knew my rating in 99, and they said, they said, 
that? And he said, who do you want to fight? Mosley? I said, no, we are Mayweather. Fight me now, Mayweather. <laughs> and Mayweather would not fight me. Mayweather would not fight me at the time. Going back to that fight then, Angel, just to touch on the fight yourself, like you say, obviously Floyd wasn't the, 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 the name he is today and the, the moneymaker he is today. He was a, a, a relative, right. relatively unknown fighter at the time, and especially worldwide. I mean, he wasn't worldwide known at this time. He was known you know, in, in America, of course, but he wasn't known worldwide like he is today and going back to that fight the weight issues uh, the the stuff going on outside the ring I mean I've read stuff stories about yourself and I've read stuff about you before where which you could probably shed some light on where it's, it indicates that you you know you were leading up to the fight you were doing things that you wouldn't have normally done in the preparation for a fight and, and stuff that definitely would have affected your preparations for a fight like this oh yeah uh, I mean you know I couldn't make the weight 130 I went to Florida to somewhere hot, which was at the Ring and Brian Brandy Circus, where they used to train for the circus and all that. We made it to a gym, and uh, and I got married. I had a dream during training time. I was sneaky women in the gym. I was having a lot of sex. I, you know, I, I had a dream after the last woman I was with in the gym. And in that dream, God told me my wife. I woke up, I called her, so will you marry me? She said, yes. I said, we got married in the boxing ring. I got married in the same boxing ring I trained for, for the Mayweather fight during training camp in the boxing ring. And uh, that goes to show you, my mind was not there. I was, mainly God was trying to put my life together yeah. as a, as a as a father and then I be, you know then I became a husband so so God was molding me together he was you know he's a potter I'm the clay he's he's putting all the pieces together in my life that was empty and uh and uh as you see I couldn't make the weight I got married during training camp in the same training ring I was I, I, I was training for for Mayweather uh and I was just have a lot of sex with a lot of different women, you know, saying before that marriage. But guess what? It ended up the way it ended up a controversial loss. It's always going to be called a controversial loss, and that's how the story goes. But it does not matter, you know, saying, uh, I take nothing away from Mayweather. It's not about Mayweather. It was about Matt Freddy. Yeah. It's about what I was going through in my life. Yeah. Uh, nobody shot, nobody beat me but me. I beat myself. I, I, I was, you know, you know, Mayweather didn't know that I was sleeping with women and, and all that. He didn't know that I got married during training camp. He didn't know that, that, that I couldn't make the weight. He didn't know, but I knew. Yeah. I knew. I knew. But, uh, it, it does not matter. It does not matter. History is made. History is made and, uh, it's always going to go down in history, me and Mayweather. Yeah, absolutely. It's always going to go down in history. Well, going, going back over then to, 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 fo- well, following that, Lost to Mayweather, you, you obviously you bounce back with a KO victory in '99, and then you come back and you fight Ivan Robinson, uh, who'd beat Arturo Gatti twice, one of your former foes. He'd beat him twice in '98, and then he, meet, he meets uh, he meets you back up at lightweight, and uh, you, you pick up the unanimous decision over ten rounds, and you're back on track again. You're getting back to where you were before, and then come to you know the back end of 1999, and you're back in for a world title against Stevie Johnston for the WBC lightweight title. Just go back to that. Yeah. Just go back to that period, then, Angel, and uh, talk to me about that particular that particular fight and the the lead up. And w- was this stuff going on in the lead up to that th- at that point, or was this where because you said you started to put your life together at this point? Was 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 that starting to reflect a bit better at that point? Well, well, yeah, you know, I put my I put my life together morally as well as spiritually, but not spiritually. The inner man. Uh, after the Ivan Robinson fight, I got the highest rating on HBO. Uh, I was the man for boxing. I I brought I brought him in, man. I, I did my job. I did more than my job. I accomplished the hardest thing it is to accomplish with the highest rating on HBO and be the, the, the money maker, you know, in boxing. Uh, with El Diablo, I, I was still looking like El Diablo. As you know, I didn't wear the mask for the Mayweather fight. Yeah. Going back to the Mayweather fight, I didn't wear the mask for the Mayweather fight. You know why I didn't wear the mask? Because every, when they were wrapping my hands in the locker room, Sam Colonna, my trainer, was wrapping my hands, and John Taylor rubbing my hands in the locker room. All I could hear is Diablo, Diablo. 
Diabo, of the devil, devil, you know what I'm saying? And in my mind, I said, I ain't no devil, I'm Angel Man Freddy. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I said, I was like, no, I ain't no devil. I mean, so when I came out, Kid Rock was leading the way, and I'm holding the devil mask in my hand, and they're thinking that something's happened, that I changed. It wasn't that I changed, it's just that I, I was, all I could hear is devil, devil, diablo, diablo, devil, devil. And I told my, I told them, I, and the locker was, I ain't no devil, I'm Angel Man Freddy. So when I came out wearing the devil mask, I was wearing the devil mask in my hand, talking to the devil mask, telling the devil mask, I'm going to get you, devil, I'm going to cut your head off. And when I got into the ring, I showed everybody the devil mask, turned it into a circle, showed everybody the devil mask, I said, you want the devil? Take the devil. And I threw the devil mask into the ring, into the audience. Everybody wanted to know why did not wear the devil mask. Now they know why. But yeah. when, they, when the book comes out, when the movie comes out, they're really going to know why. They're really going to know why I did what I did. Nobody has a story like mine. Nobody impacted the world like my story or what I've gone through in life. And I don't give I don't give all I don't give credit to myself. It's, I give credit to Almighty God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is my God. I give all him to, he gets all the credit for everything. You know what I'm saying? Because because if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for him I wouldn't be here to this day, my friend. I tell you, I tell you, uh, opportunities came. Stevie Johnson, with Stevie Johnson, when I fought Stevie Johnson, Mayweather, they already announced that Mayweather wouldn't even fight him. Little bit bad, Stevie Johnson, he was a very talented fighter at the time, but I was the name. I was still the name. Yeah. And I made more money than him for the fight. <laughs> and he was we the champ. for his title. It's a, it's a bit crazy, that, to think about the fact that you actually made more money than him, and he was the champ at the time but as you said the fan base at that period of time was, was, was that I mean, big I mean, I mean, yeah I made more money than Mayweather I made more money than Steve Johnson because the fan base because what I drew in what I brought in from the ratings so going back to that one then Angel obviously that was a, that was a loss against Stevie Johnson over the 12 rounds and yeah, yeah. Talk, talk us through that one Angel talk us through that particular fight and well, uh, well Stevie Johnson Stevie Johnson Johnson beat me. You know why he beat me? Because in the locker room, in the locker room, I was looking at the devil's mask. You know why I was looking at the devil's mask? Because I was looking at the devil's mask. I was telling myself in my mind, the Bible says so bad, think I'm so easy. In my mind, I was contemplating, should I wear it? Should I wear the devil's mask? Should I wear the devil's mask? Should I wear it? Should I wear it? Should I not wear it? Should I wear it? Should I not wear it? So in my mind, I was struggling with wearing, should I wear the mask or should I not wear the mask? I was confused. I was struggling. I was double-minded. I was unstable in all my ways. And and I partied like uh, uh, less than a month before the Stevie Johnson fight, cocaine. So I was double-minded in my mind. And I heard a voice say, word for the fans. In my mind, I heard that voice. I said, yeah, I'll wear it for the fans. That was why I wore the devil mask. The why I wore the devil mask was to let people know I'm coming to kill, steal, and destroy. You're going to come, you're going to see a, a fight. When you see when when you I represent a devil, I represent a, a a vast man. I represent a different man. I represent an image that you don't want to play with. You don't want to. It's not going to be easy to get past this devil, this angel, this confused fighter, this this strong fighter, this mean fighter. But what fighter did you fight? And uh, and that fight, Stevie Steve Johnson didn't fight 100% Angel Red Freddy because I was struggling in my mind about wearing this mask and I was twisted in my mind and uh, as you saw the fight it was a good fight but uh, Stevie Johnson outboxed me because literally I just was not the fighter that I was with the Ivor Robinson fight the Ivor Robinson fight I was so much better than the Steve Johnson fight because literally I just was not there at the time. And uh, after the Steve Johnson fight, two more world titles. All together I had five world titles. I won my first, lost the four to the BBC, to IBF. And uh, so I all together had five world titles. Uh, six of you, two my featherweight title, and that was their world title. But, uh, but you know, as you saw on TV, I thought, 
four more times yeah. on HBO for world title. You did, yeah. Four world title chances I have on HBO. Why is that? Because my ratings and my fan base, because of my my drawing, because people follow me. People love me on TV. They love watching me. They love seeing what I brought to the table, what I brought to the ring, my show, my performance. Uh, but it was all a story. It was all a story. It's going into a book. It's going into a movie. The people are going to hear. They're going to know why El Diablo, why El Diablo with Angel Wing, why they wanted the devil mask, why I wanted the devil mask, when I shouldn't have wanted the devil mask, why I was going to commit suicide, why the drugs, why the party, why the car accidents, why why, 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 Just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsors for the podcast. It's Steroplast Healthcare Limited. And this week we've got the launch of the KO Tape. The undisputed champion of tapes is finally here. And it was launched this week at Steroplast headquarters. And you had the likes of Zelfa Barrett, Jimmy Kelly, Lyndon Arthur, to name but three great Northwest fighters, Ben Sheeda, Danny Wright, people like that, local fighters that have been using this tape and have swore by it. And you'll see it more and more because it's getting around more and more it's great it's fantastic really really great products go to the eat sleep boxing repeat youtube page find some of the interviews recently that we've done find the comments from the guys that have been fighting using this tape on their hands and how much of a difference it makes so if you've not already heard about it get over to the website it's www.kotape.co.uk so angel you talked about the five fights in total for world titles and you know they weren't just anybody you fought were they you know they were actually names that at this point in time where we are now 2018 these are names that are going are gone down in history you know getting names like Diego Corrales the names like Stevie Johnson you fought Julio Diaz uh, Paul your last world title challenge against Paul Spadafora for the IBF title yeah. so the, the, you know they weren't just anybody they weren't weak champions they were they were names that when you speak these names to other other boxing fans other critics you know they know who they are they know they know him very well so it weren't like oh. you were just fighting anybody for a world title like in this day and age Angel as you know they have they have about five world titles in the divisions and you can you can you know as a lesser as a lesser fighter with all due respect to, to all the fighters out there with as a lesser fighter you've got an opportunity there to, to win a world title without having to actually fight the big names whereas you going back to your career you always fought the big names when it came to the crunch oh yeah and, and that's that's what boxing should be. I thought boxing should be. It's too bad it's not. It's not what it should be in this era that we live in now. Though we do have good fighters, I take away nothing from Devontae Wilder, Joshua, uh, Spence, Spence yeah. uh, Crawford, uh, Thurman, uh, 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 Canelo, Super G. I mean, fighters like that. That you know, they made boxing in this era we live in now. Yeah. Um, but are they making the money like uh, like we did? No, not like we did. But they're making it. Yeah. Canelo's doing very well. I I, I, I do believe that Canelo and uh, is doing very well. With De La Hoya, because De La Hoya knows how to market it. He's marketing Canelo very well and moving Canelo very well. Even though I felt that Canelo lost with Super G on the first fight, and I think he's going to lose the second fight, but uh, we'll see. Uh, we will see. But uh, uh, you know what? It, it's uh, the era we live. The era that we lived in the nineties was the best era of boxing, I believe. Yeah. Well, I uh, I grew up watching boxing, and I became a fan watching boxing in the nineties. Twenty years later, two. 2018. I obviously I I do what I do now, and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy it. And it's a it, it is it is a great era what we're in. We've got some fantastic fighters, but you know when I think about boxing and I think about some of the greatest fights I remember watching, and they were all from the 90s. And you know you were you were involved in a couple of them, and it's 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 obviously great to speak to you and hear about what your story's been. But we're not we're not finished yet. There's a little bit more stories just left to tell because obviously we talk talked about your fighting career a lot but we've talked about your other side uh, of your life the demons the struggles the 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 struggle in preparation for fights the party and the drugs uh, the women
women, you know, you, you eventually made that decision to, to become a born again Christian after, as you said earlier, you know, nearly taking your own life. And it, it was at that point then that things started to turn around. Is is, is that right in, in what I'm saying there? Is is that where you really started to turn your life around from there? I, will, I, would, I would say I would say turn my life outside the ring, yes. Not inside the ring. Inside the ring, uh, I didn't have that. Uh, I still brought a lot to the table as a fighter, but I didn't have that fire. That yeah. fire, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have that, uh, that hunger to hurt people. Uh, to hurt fighters, to hurt my opponent. Uh, I had a lot of love in me. I had a lot of joy in me. I had a lot of peace in me. I, uh, I was, I was living a right life. I was living a holy life. I was living a right life, you know. Uh, but yet, yeah, you can't mix the two, you'll say. That's why, uh, uh, outside the ring, I was doing very well. I was, uh, was being a father to my children, uh, finally being a father to my children, finally being a husband to my wife, finally being a man of God. Uh, it's where life is all, it's where it's all about. This is what life's all about. Yeah, no, and, uh, I, I agree. The boxing, bo- boxing, boxing is always a part of my life. And that's why I tell people it's in and out of the ring. I'm still in the ring at this time, meaning I'm still in the boxing world at this time. I'm still have my marketer, Lori Otaker, the more marketing, she's my marketing coordinator in my team. We have the team together and uh, we're doing big things in the team. And, and uh, we're, we're getting my name out there. And uh, it looks like uh, Nevada is we're looking at Nevada, going to the Hall of Fame, uh, not this year, maybe next year. We're all willing to be, be talking about it. So we're, we're looking at a lot of stuff happening. And, uh, you know, in and out of the ring is where it's at. You know what I'm saying? Uh, bringing that story into the ring is where the fighters are going to be very, very uh, marketable. And uh, uh, it just so happened that I, I was living my marketable and uh, was getting paid when I was supposed to get paid with that old okay, I made me. But uh, I was happy with now I was content with what I made in my career. But uh, if you put that, if you put an El Diablo now in, in, the, in the 2000 for the first century, wow, maybe 30, 40, 50, 100 mil, probably more than that. Yeah. I mean, it'd be crazy. But uh, but uh, I, I'm, I'm just thankful outside the ring. I'm outside the ring and I'm uh, being that positive role model for up and coming fighters, being a positive role model for uh, for for any and every Everybody that is struggling with life, whether it's the fame, whether it's the force, whether it's the drugs, whether it's the women. I mean, you, you hear about it every day. People kill themselves daily. Kids kill themselves daily, hanging themselves uh, daily. I mean, it's crazy. The stories I hear because my wife's the corner. My wife's the corner, and she uh, she cuts down bodies. Kids are hanging themselves, committing OD, OD, drug overdose. I mean, yeah. I just, you know, they, 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 and when I hear all these stories, my wife tells me, you know, I, I look at my life and, and God says it all, all time, it should have been you, but there always was a but with Matt Freddy, I tell you that, my friend. <laughs> but, you, but, <laughs> I tell you, but uh, it's it's a beautiful thing. I'm living a beautiful life right now. I'm thankful and I'm content. I'm happy. And uh, big things are coming. So I uh, let the UK know and let the world know. Big things are coming for Angel Manfredi for myself, and I'm excited about it. And uh, with my book, with my movie, uh, my film, whichever documentary movie, uh, with uh, I would be working with a, a workout machine. I can't say the name of it again because we have not signed the contract. We're in the making of signing the contract. A workout machine. I'm be working with. It's going to be in gyms throughout the world, in and out of the ring throughout the world. It's going to be exciting. I'm excited about it, and uh, I'm thankful. Thankful. I'm thankful. It sounds like, to me, I, I I already knew your story and I already read a lot of stuff, you know, prior to actually having this conversation with you today. So a lot of the stuff you've talked to me about in here kind of just clarifies some of the stuff I've already read about in the past. But the positive side of things, everything that I've heard is that you, you, you've had a lot of struggles, a lot of ups and downs, a great, great career, a, a career that a lot of people will say is Hall of Fame worthy. And now you're at a point where everything's the, the going the way that you you 
intend it to go and you, you, you've got the gym you've got the fighters you've got the book the movie the motivational speaking uh, it sounds like you're a very very busy man but also a man that's uh, doing good things for people at the moment well I'm giving, I'm giving back uh, and it's all about giving back uh, Jesus showed the perfect example which is God in flesh showed the perfect example by giving back give it to the world and give his life to the world and I give my life to the world as well as a man I give my life to the world I, I serve I come to serve like my father I come to serve I come to serve people and I come to give people what they want to hear I come to give people what they want to see I come to people what they want to know and uh, and it's going to be exciting what's going to happen throughout these years that are coming before me and then by next year everything is going to be books should be published uh, guaranteed books should be published movies should be going on so I'm excited I'm so excited I'm hearing big things the big people are wanting to a lot of big money that's coming you know what I'm saying yeah. but it's not about the money that I'm not worried about I'm not worried about the money it's going to produce the money it's, it's okay. I'm okay uh, it's, it's going to produce what it's going to produce I'm going to be very happy very content with what it produces but it's going to be all for the glory of God and it's going to inspire kids it's going to inspire the youth it's going to inspire the next generation out in the world today uh, because that's what kids need. They need direction. They need guidance. They need instruction. They need, they need a way to see right. That way they can make it in life. That way they can achieve their life's heart's desires, their life's heart's wants. And they can do all things if they just follow the course, follow the plan, follow the way. And Jesus Christ is the way. So I, I'm, I'm very thankful uh, for entering outside the world. Uh, I'm excited, and uh, thank you. I thank you very much. No, it's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you. Thank you for telling your story. Thank you for coming on, spending the time speaking to myself today. And it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. A wonderful step back in time to, to hear about your career and the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you don't always hear about. Because remember, we, never, we didn't have all... All the social media back in the nineties, we didn't have all what we've got today. So you didn't get that sort right. of info- you didn't get that, that sort of information that we get today now. So it's good to hear it firsthand and directly from the man himself. And it's exciting to hear about the projects that you've got going on. Uh, inspirational to hear what you're doing for others and what you're giving back. And it also, to me, means that the the Man Freddy legacy continues outside of the ring. Oh yes, oh yes, it does. It really does, and that's where it comes the most. That's where a true champion is at. I, don't tell me a true champion. Don't judge a true champion by in the ring. Judge him by out the ring as well. Because uh, out the ring is where his shoe attributes show. His shoe fruit shows. His shoe personality shows. His shoe aura as a champion and his finesse as a champion shows. Outside the ring always shows you the champion and, uh, and, and what the champion can become in and outside the ring. Outside the ring is where it's at. And uh, I thank God that I'm outside the ring right now. And I thank God I'm, I'm giving back to the, the next generation that's out there. And uh, it's going to be inspiring to me, myself, and to the world. I give glory and honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Where can people find you to follow your journey on social media? You can find me on uh, Facebook. I'm on Facebook, Angel Manfredi. I'm also on uh, Instagram. Uh, you can also Hit me in my manfreddyboxing at gmail.com. Uh, you can contact me there if you want any interviews, anything, uh, anything to contact me for special meet and greets throughout the world. I mean, Manfredi boxing, uh, Manfredi boxing at gmail.com. You can contact me there as well. Or you can contact me, contact my marketing coordinator, which is Lori Otterga at 219-669-6078. Manfredi Boxing at gmail.com. Angel. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go, Angel Manfredi giving us his life story. Really good to hear from him. Really good to hear about what's planned for the future for him, the book, the movie. I hope it all does come off for him because it'd be really good to see his life turn into a movie. As you heard there, you'll hear a lot of the stories, the background stuff. It, it, it'd make a pretty good movie, I'm sure. So I hope you've really enjoyed this first episode of The Life and Times of. As always, you know where to find us. It's at BTR Boxing Pod, Beyond the Ropes Boxing Podcast on Facebook. Facebook. You can find us on all good available podcasting apps, including Castbox, iTunes, SoundCloud, Player FM 
the lot. That's where we are. And remember to rate review and subscribe so thank you everybody for listening to this episode i hope you really enjoyed it please leave us some feedback thank you very much and we'll speak to you next time